Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us here today to learn about LaunchVix support for regional Victorian startup entrepreneurs, expression of interest and grant round. Um, my name is Josh Lipscomb. I am the community programs lead at LaunchVic. Usually Kate Cornick, our CEO, leads these sessions. Uh, unfortunately, Kate has come down with COVID um, and is unwell. So you've got me. I will do my very best to live up to her standards. Um, and please, if you do have any questions at all throughout the session, um, please do pop them in the Q&A chat. Um, Beck Pert, our grants manager, is here on standby helping out with that. And I'm also joined by Bronwyn Bitro, our events manager, who will be managing the, Q the chat as well. Um, I would like to begin by acknowledging the, tra the traditional owners of the lands on which we're all meeting and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge that this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Today we are meeting on Wurundjeri country here at the Launch Vic offices in Richmond, but we're here today to talk about programs that will support Victorian entrepreneurs from across the regions. Uh, last week, um, Startup Genome, which is the Global Ecosystem Benchmarking Agency, released their 2022 global report. And with that, it was announced that Victoria's early stage startup sector has doubled year on year for the past three years. And we're now valued at 23.6 billion, which is huge. Victoria is home now to more than 2,700 startups. Um, and with that, which is quite fantastic growth over the last few years, only 3% of those founders identify as regional founders, despite 25% of Victoria's population living out in the regions. And um, we heard last week at Thrive, our regional startup conference from Dr. Peter Ginn from the University of Melbourne, there are more and more people fleeing the metropolitan cities for our region, so that number is only going to be growing over the next little while. And so with that, we at LaunchVic really want to build a vibrant regional Victorian startup community by helping more early stage ecosystem development activities across regional centres and in that part helping more uh, more startups entrepreneurs in the regions start startups and grow on to become great successful um, players in our ecosystems. Uh, we thought it would be a good idea just to refresh on some of the differences between startups and small businesses. Uh, we, as Launch Vic, are charged with growing the Victorian startup sector. Uh, if you have a startup, we are interested in helping you. And if you are a small business or are wanting to be helping small businesses, there are other government agencies and other mechanisms in place that would be better suited for yourselves. But we at Launch Vic, uh, we classify startups as a young technology-based business that uses innovation to scale rapidly and capture global markets. An example that we like to use pretty often, you've probably heard us uh, talk about this uh, example a few times, um, if, uh, is you're a local accountant. Um, so your local accountant down on High Street or wherever, uh, they can only really operate on a small scale uh, and serve their local community. The only way they can really grow and scale is through uh, employing more staff. Whereas on the other hand, you've got Zero or MYAB, which is uh, also based in Cremorne here in Melbourne, uh, two super successful startups. They're able to serve hundreds of thousand customers at a time through the software that they've designed and built. Um, other examples of technology that sometimes come up through this, these questions, um, software as a service, artificial intelligence, blockchain, Web3, NFTs, uh, advanced manufacturing and robotics, big data, uh, and the list goes on. We do have these definitions on our website and they're also in the guidelines for this grant round as well. So on to the juicy stuff. Um, we are seeking expressions of interest for this grant round. Uh, the objective of this, uh, of this round is to help grow regional startup ecosystems. Uh, and we want, uh, the pe we want people to be thinking about uh, startups as a pathway uh, into the startup ecosystem and eventually increase the early number of early stage startups created in regional Victoria. As someone who grew up in regional Victoria, uh, it was always the mindset that if you wanted to be or do anything, the idea was that you had to leave the regions for the city. Uh, that was where you could get education opportunities um, and all, the, all that sort. And through this, uh, through this, and through the next 
few years, we want to see more ecosystems and more support emerge in the regions to either encourage people to start startups in the regions and not actually have to leave or move out to uh, and have a supportive network and space for people to be growing and establishing their startups in the regions. So through this, um, we are looking at a number of different, different ideas and ways uh, for, for people to be doing that and growing these ecosystems. Um, unlike a lot of other grant rounds that we have run in the past, this one is designed to be um, tell us what you think, tell us what you need um, kind of approach. We will refund uh, existing um, programs uh, if the if the application is good enough. Um, but we're we have run, we've funded a number of programs in the past uh, that are, are doing really fantastic jobs out in the regions. Uh, I'll shout out to Startup Gippsland, Startup Shakeup, and Runway. Um, but we are looking for new ideas, new programs, um, and new 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 thoughts um, potentially uh, on what needs to be done um, out in your local area. We want to hear from you about who your local ecosystem is, who's in your community, who are who is who are the people um, that need to be running these programs, uh, and what do you think is going to be best suited? Um, we uh, so the first stage of this program uh, process is putting the EOR expression of interest in um, that they will be assessed by a uh, assessment team from LaunchVic, and then uh, successful applications from the EOI will be invited to submit a re request for proposal uh, as a stage two. We are looking to fund between 50,000 to 300,000 over a one to two year program uh, and funds can be used for operating costs. So salaries, event hire, production, um, that kind of thing. Uh, eligibility, um, these programs must be supporting regional Victorian startups over the age of 18 uh, and re regional Victoria startup ecosystem development by delivering startup programs and or pre-accelerator uh, pre programs. Um, by startup programs, this can be anything from meetups, hackathons, um, other like long-term educational programs to support early stage startups. Um, but the idea with this grant round, as I mentioned, is you tell us what your local community needs. Um, uh, you have to have a delivery, te delivery team that has experience working with uh, and delivering similar programs for startups uh, or startup entrepreneurs preferably with strong ties in the regional or rural, rural community that you're proposing to work with. Um, I'm just going to do a quick check on the Q&A. Um, uh, so Kerry Anderson from Startup Central Victoria has uh, just asked uh, to clarify whether a startup is often only defined if it receives support from LaunchVic funded services. Um, so for that, Kerry, um, we define a startup. Uh, our definition of a startup is a technology-driven business, um, whether or not it's received support from a launch big service. Um, I hope that's answering your question. Um, and Paul has asked the total funding funding pool for this round. Uh, this will be dependent on how many um, how many quality and the types of applications that we get. Um, over the over the round um, and a question from Tom around matching fund requirement. There isn't a, um, a match funding requirement for this round, uh, but we always do look at um, we do look at matched funding or contributions from partners um, or the lead applicant. Uh, we look at those contributions quite favorably, um, but as I mentioned, they are not, uh, not compulsory. And it's also, that can sometimes depend on how much you're actually applying for as well. Um, but going through the key assessment criteria for the EOI, um, as I mentioned, this is a two-stage round. Um, the EOI is the first stage and the stage two will be the RFP. Um, the RFP uh, key assessment criteria will be a little bit more, uh, more this, but with a little bit more beef added to it as well. Um, so in your application, we're looking for you to tell us what the proposal is, what the program is, uh, what, what are you doing, what is the type of the program, what is the delivery model, what's the type of content that you're planning to, um, to take people through, uh, and the idea around um, the number of participants and who your target audience is. Um, we, and with that, we want to know why LaunchVic funding is required, why are you asking us 
Um, why, why is the startup agency uh, funding required for this program that you're proposing to run? Um, we also are asking you to tell us about your local ecosystem, uh, the stage of development and why the program is required at this time, who will benefit from the program and how you will go about recruiting participants into the program as well. From the delivery team uh, side of things, we're looking for the background um, of the team or the organization um, and the relevant experience that you have uh, delivering these types of programs. Um, we're also looking for your connections with that regional area or the rural community that you're planning to work with. And with that, how you're planning to leverage that, uh, those relationships or that position that you have uh, in that regional area itself. We want to make sure that the people who are running these programs are the, the people that have those connections and have that, uh, the relationship and the respect in these regional communities to be actually delivering these programs. From the finance side of things, um, we will have a budget template for you to plug into. As an EOI, we're not asking you to put in all of the, all of the dirty details onto the budget, but we want to know ballpark what you're expecting to be spending, uh, how much it's going to cost, and if there is potentially going to be other uh, partner contributions as well. Um, as I mentioned, the part partner contributions are not uh, required for this round. Um, their uh, letters of support are not required for the expressions of interest. Uh, however, if you are successful um, into stage two, you will be required and expected to provide letters of support for those partner contributions. Um, and as I mentioned, this is just all we're asking for the EOI is just a super simple budget, ballpark figure, how much is it going to cost, where are those funds going, um, and then, you know, successful applications into stage two will be asked to go down into a little bit more detail around that. Um, so that leads us into the questions in Q&A, uh, and I'm seeing quite a few come through. Um, I'm going to just open those up. Um, a uh, question here from Samir, uh, we're an existing pre accelerated program, but not funded by Launch Vic. Are we eligible to apply? Uh, yes, Samir, you absolutely are. We are looking to fund uh, new and or existing programs uh, through this funding round. Um, so you, you are very eligible to apply. <laughs> Uh, another one from Samir, we're also creating an accelerator program in addition to pre-accelerator program and applying for the Launch Vic World Class Accelerator Program, which is another grant round we have open at the moment. Um, are we still eligible? Yes, you are. Um, programs that we have funded, program people, uh, programs that are going through another grant round at the moment are eligible. Uh, this, is a, this is a separate standalone EOI grant round process. Um, so you are eligible whether you are successful or not successful through the other grant round uh, as well. A uh, question here from Jin. Uh, can a research team in a university in Vic apply for its uh, for the commercial trial by establishing a startup? Um, we're not looking to fund startups through this grant round, um, but if you are looking to apply to run a program to support startups to establish uh, in regional areas, uh, then you are certainly eligible to apply through that. Uh, a question from now. Um, hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, could a proposed program cover all of regional Victoria or are you looking for local programs only? Uh, great question um, now. And so this comes back to, you know, you tell us what you think uh, regional Victoria needs. If you think a program that covers all those programs, uh, you can deliver it well and you can deliver it that's going to cater to all the needs from all the different areas around regional Victoria. Um, that is great. That sounds like a great program. Um, but we would need you to prove that that's exactly what needs to be happening in, uh, in those different regional areas. Um, and making sure that you also have uh, good links and good ties to those areas as well. Um, through that, we're trying to prevent uh, someone just coming in from the city and trying to run out a program, a blanket program for the whole of regional Victoria without any good, strong connections uh, with those regional communities and really good understanding of those regional communities. Um, a question from uh, Elena Young from up, the up in the Northeast from Startup Shakeup. Um, 
is an application going to be stronger if it includes both programs and a pre-accelerator rather than just one element? Um, great question, Elena. Um, through the startup programs um, kind of piece, one of the things we're looking to see is more startup activity and more support outside of a traditional pre-accelerator program um, in the area. We know that communities, uh, community building and communities are one of the the greatest and strongest things to help pull out um, people from the regions um, in particular, but also just anywhere in general. Um, and so through that, we want to see more people, uh, more opportunities for people to access um, these kind of communities uh, that are, exist and are starting to establish out in the regions. Um, I think if you are planning to include both, um, you know, we'd like to see what those actually what what the pre accelerator and what the programs look like and how they would complement each other, um, and you know how they're going to help grow the local ecosystem and the local community. A uh, question from Leslie: uh, When you talk about being technology based, would that include a project that include that uses a lot of technology, such as advanced manufacturing, or does it have to be a technology output such as software or hardware? It can be either, Leslie, um, just as long as the startup is using technology in some way, shape, or form. Uh, a, a question from Peter around the RFP, RFP, D, RFP details. <laughs> I don't know if they're available yet. Uh, they will be made available um, uh, as we pro proceed through stage two. Um, I don't have the timelines on my screen at the moment, but I will ask Beck or Bron, who are in the room with me, to add the timelines of the grant round and the RFP uh, into the chat as well. Um, a question from Paul uh, from Regional Rising. Uh, will local bottom-up community-led applications be looked upon more favourably, uh, carry more weight, uh, than the usual few non-local providers who travel from outside the regions? Um, again, great question, Paul. Um, this is something that I personally would uh, care a lot about, supporting the right people to do the right programming in, in the right spaces. Um, and this comes down to the uh, experience of the delivery team and the uh, delivery organisation and their ties uh, to those regional or rural local communities. So in applications, we want to see people who are who have those strong connections and have those relationships uh, and that expertise uh, delivering these programs. Uh, a question, another question from uh, Ian. Uh, I'm working in a startup. How do I find about grant recipients and organisations who are applying for funding in this grant round? I'm based in Warnable, uh, and there's no startup community here yet. Um, oh, I think Paul is actually based down in Paul. Paul Dillon, who just asked the last question, is based down towards that way. Um, and there are we Launchpick has actually funded a program in Warnable a few years ago uh, through the local council there. Uh, most of those uh, council uh, folk have actually moved on, which is really disappointing. They're now actually based in Melbourne, I think. Um, but Warnable, um, there are a few folk um, working down in Warnable. So I, Ian, if you could actually shoot us an email, um, grants at launchvic.org, uh, and we can connect you with those. Uh, and any, um, all of the successful recipients for this grant round uh, delivering regional programs will be publicly advertised uh, on our website uh, in due course, I think September. Um, uh, and yeah, so Ian or anybody, shoot us a message if you're trying to connect with any of these regional programs uh, and we can help direct those. Uh, question from Peter. Uh, Grant Guru often provides grant support to incubators, accelerators, et cetera. Being a niche service provider, we're typically not the lead applicant. Is there a register or directory to lead applicants to know of service providers like us to add value in their initiatives applications? Um, Peter, if you're trying to uh, find some people to help out, um, maybe pop your details in the chat. And if anyone's in interested in reaching out, they can get in touch with you. Um, otherwise, you might uh, you might like to look on the direct, uh, just general business directories to see who you think might be, um, might be looking. We don't offer a matchmaking service, um, unfortunately, here at LaunchBig. Another question from Samir. Uh, our program is focused at advanced manufacturing startups products. Uh, focused, uh, sorry, yeah. uh, startups product oriented startups that have intention to manufacture in the region. This reduces the scope to increase number of participants per cohort. 
So how important is it to have high numbers of participants per cohort? We want to know what the program is going to be. We want to see what the value is going to be, uh, regardless of who, how many participants are going to be going through. If there's going to be a great program for a few participants, then that's fantastic. If it's going to be a great program for a lot of participants, that's also great. Um, we want to know what the details of the program are, the value of the program, um, and how that is going to reflect in the delivery and the outcomes um, at the end. Question from Kylie from Bendigo Health, um, another program that we helped set up a few years ago. Um, how are sector specific programs viewed in growing the local ecosystem? Is strong connection with the startup community and other programs viewed in a positive light? Um, absolutely, yeah. strong connection with startup community and other programs is great. It shows that you are connected into the ecosystem and you understand uh, what the local ecosystem need. Um, sector specific programs, Absolutely, tell us like tell us what the community is and why they need a sector specific program. Um, make sure that's very clear in your application, um, and that will be um, that we measured against what else is going on in the ecosystem. Uh, and a question question here from Chris: uh, Has LaunchFix supported any incubator programs in the Wimmera Southern Mallee? I don't think we have, Chris. Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Through our sixth round of funding, we did support a program up in Mildura, um, but I don't think in Wimmera South. Um, that, was, that was quite a few questions. Um, I now know how Kate Connick feels on these, uh, on these webinars. Um, if you do have any more questions, uh, do feel free to pop them in the Q&A. Um, We've still got a little bit of time here um, and happy to answer um, any other questions as they pop up. Uh, I will just uh, answer this one because this is quite a common question that we do get. Um, can I have a chat to someone at LaunchVic to discuss my proposal? Uh, unfortunately, under our probity policy, we are unable to have uh, confidential conversations with anybody. Uh, if you do have any other questions at any point around this round, um, please do email them through to grants at launchvic.org. Uh, we will answer that question and any questions that do come through that grants line, we make sure that we update our FAQ page um, at launchvic.org as well. So we'll just hang on for for another few minutes uh, in case any other questions do come through. Uh, and so if there's no other questions, I will say thank you all very much for tuning in today. Um, and again, grants at launchvic.org if you have any other questions. Um, but hopefully we look forward to seeing some really fantastic applications come through over the next few weeks. Thanks very much.